All right, here's a question that is fun. Translation, not fun at all. Okay, that means it's on the difficult end of the spectrum. But we gotta do what we gotta do. So let's take a look how we can obtain what this question is asking us to find. All right, first of all, let's look at the uh, figure. And what we have is we have a water tank over here. And what I do over here is I have an observation gate. And as you can see here, this is hinge over here. So it kind of like opens like that, right? Um, and the question is, as you see that there's a force here, I need to apply some force to hold the gate closed. So I'm asking you, what is that force? So in order to obtain this, what I need to do is I need to find few things. The first of all, as we kind of know already, I have water over here This is going to push it like that. And we established that the pressure is going to be perpendicular to the surface like this. Okay, so I'm going to call this FP, uh, pressure force. And as you may have noticed, I did not draw this at the geometric center. I drove this a little bit after the geometric center. The reason is that typically that's what happens to the center of pressure. Okay, so let's take a look at it uh, before. Let's see what I need. So I usually, in these kind of questions, what I need to do is I need to take a moment with respect to this hinged point, right, from your statics courses. And from that end, it's not that complicated. So I'm going to have this FP times, let's call this distance, uh, you know, X, which I don't know. FP times X will be equal to F times, because one is positive, the other one is negative, times um, the distance. What is that distance? Yeah, we should be able to calculate that. But if not, what we need to do is you need to kind of like continue like this, right? So as you see here, this is going to be 45 degrees, right? Um, so basically, this whole thing is 45 degrees. And what about this height? That is 2 meters, right? Because this is given as 3, this is as 5. So this means this is 2, okay? So let's write this. Sine of 45 will be equal to... Um, 2 divided by, let's call this D, diameter, right, diameter of that circle. And then from here, the D will be equal to 2 square root of 2. So if I write, well, I put here R, so let's put here, square root of 2, does this make sense? Right, so it's going to be this then. So, okay, so this is the question mark, I know this. Uh, see, this is a problem, I don't know this X distance, I don't know this FP. So I got to get the business. Um, so this X I'm sure you have noticed by now, but it will be related to center of pressure, right? FP. Well, there is one formula. Uh, it's not in the reference manual. I recommend it that you study it though, right? Specific weight times HC times A. So this, even I can do this, 9810. How about HC? Let's take a look. Okay, so the HC it will be, right? First of all, geometric center is right here, right? So that will be right there. And this will be this height. HC will be this height from the free surface. How am I going to calculate it? Well, you can see that I have like a triangle over here. So this is 3. This is 5, given to me right over here. Uh, this is 5. So right at the middle of it, it's going to be 4. I hope you see it. If not, you can write sine of this distance, you know, just like I did over here. You can complete the same process. But I saw that this height that I have here will be 4 meters, okay? Because it's right between the 3 meters and 5 meters. It's going to be 4 meters. And the area, I got my D. Let's write P, pi R square. So R is square root of 2's. So if I proceed with this, I will get myself 9810 times pi square root of 2, 8, right? And when I plug this into my calculator, I will get myself at 246,552 newtons. Um, okay, so I kind of know this FP now, all right? But I don't know X. So now the next goal is to find the X value, okay? And actually what I'm gonna do is, as an alternative, uh, for a student who may be, um, not too familiar with it because the process is not that fun. Um, I will uh, give a hint, all right, at the end of this video. I look at my um, reference manual and bam, I have an equation like this. And you know this. I did a few uh, questions from this as well. But it's important to see what YC is, right? And I will put a link here. 
uh, I have a lecture video on this. I explain this in detail. It's a long uh, lecture video. But basically, I look at the reference manual. Here is what it says. It says that this YC is, this is the center, right, right over here. Um, it says the slant distance from the liquid surface, slant distance from the liquid surface to the centroid of the area. Centroid is the geometric center for this particular case, right? So it's saying that, hey, this is, this is it, this is YC. So it gets a little bit complicated. So why don't I, uh, you know, go ahead and erase some of the stuff over here so make this uh, cleaner because you now know what a hinge is, right? This distance and also let's try to make this a little bit cleaner and I know this is three meters as well, right? So let's take advantage of writing on this uh, tablet, right? Um, okay, so the first step is, as you note here, the distance between geometric center and center of the pressure will be this. Because here's what says YC plus that distance will give you the center of pressure. So this distance that I'm identifying here will be that. Okay. So at first glance, it may seem that, hey, I don't really need YC. So why are you wasting my time? Well, what about this guy? That is YC as well. So I need to know YC. Okay. So it's not that straightforward. So let's find YC then. Okay. So remember that the height, I erased it, but the height was 4 and I have an angle 45. So I will simply use that. So basically, it's this equation. Okay, same thing. So sine of 45 will be equal to this 4 divided by yc. And from here, you will see that, you will see that you, my yc will be 4 square root of 2. Okay, I'll take it. 4 square root of 2. And area, we established when I was calculating this. So it's going to be pi times 2, right? Square root of 2, 2 square. I xc. I did it in the previous video, and this is going to be pi r to the 4 divided by 4. And r is square root of 2. So square root of 2 to the power of 4 is 2 to the power of 2, which is 4. So you can see these two cancel each other, right? And pi's cancel each other. So I get myself that distance that I'm talking about. Let's call this distance uh, a. So this a distance will be this. And a will be equal to 1 over um, 8 square root of 2, right? So from here, you will see that this will be right around 0 0.09, right, meters. So I got my a. Okay. I think the rest is fairly doable because you, do you see that this x is equal to a plus r, right, radius? And r is known. Square root of 2. Now, I, I know a, 0 0.09. Okay. So if I plug this over here, I will get myself FP, which I already know, 246,000, I forgot what was it, 552, 552 times, that's going to be square root of 2, which is the radius, plus this R is right over here, 0 0.09, will be equal to F, that is the question, times 2 square root of 2. So then I will plug this into my calculator, there's nothing else I can do about it, and I will get myself F to be 130,946 newtons, okay? So it's like 131,000. And if I go up over here, look at the choices that is given to me, I got myself, it's kind of like D, okay? All right, so I promised you that I was going to show you a, a, a tip. Um, so this is not a fail-proof process, but it may save you some time actually significant time. All right, you know what? I know that this is, you know, look at this distance A. I talked to, probably I said this five times already, that this A distance is a small distance, right? So why don't I simply say that, you know what, FP, I know it's wrong, but FP is acting on the geometric center. So what kind of a number do I, am I going to get, right? So basically, what I'm saying is, instead of going through this whole process, and this is the whole process, of calculating A, which is not a huge deal if you know what you're doing, right? Um, I will simply say that, hey, you know what, this, I'm going to put it into the, uh, you know, I'm just going to ignore this A and look at what the value will be. So I'm just going to plug R over here. So in, for that kind of case, what you do is you just find your FP to be this, and then you plug into the equation because the rest is already known. And if you do that, what you're going to get is you're going to get yourself 123,000 276. 
So, okay. Um, so remember this, I'm multiplying this by an actually lower number. So this fp needs to be greater than this, right? Mathematically speaking, in a real case, because this is constant. You are pretending that this number is lower, so in reality this FP needs to be higher. So it's going to be higher than 100 to Now be, you can see that it's either C or D. Maybe it's going to be end up at 124, or maybe it will be more, right? In this case, you know the answer. It's actually close to 131. So you kind of go ahead and find that way. But you can see that in this particular case, it didn't give me the answer that I wanted, this shortcut. It gave me 123, but I still want you to, you know, Realize that because if you don't know how to do this, what else can you do? It is better than nothing in my opinion. Thank you for watching this video.